Hey there, I'm Hoshdeep Singh from Hira Media. By the end of this video, you would have understood how to use app proxies with the Shopify app. So let's get right into it. Uh, first, you know, uh, you can use the uh, official Shopify CLI boilerplate template. Uh, I prefer using my own. All the links will be in the description, so you don't have to worry about this. All right, so first let's talk about what app proxies are. App proxies are a way for you to call up your database and your backend server without having to expose your API keys. Now, this is usually used with theme app extensions so that uh, you don't have to expose your keys, just like I said, which is why Shopify was like, hey, how about we give you a proxy URL? So uh, if you open up my repository, uh, you know, I have it already cloned up here. You can head over to setup uh, and scroll all the way down and you'll see that there's already enough stuff available for you to set up your proxy which means the, middle, the middleware verifications are done, which is the verify proxy middleware, and everything's just hooked up and ready to go. So the first thing I'm gonna do is head over to a partner dashboard, go to app setup, and scroll down to the app proxy configuration area. Now the way this works is the subpath prefix is something that's, uh, think of it as a reserved keyword in the URL, where these four keywords are only available to applications, right? So we're gonna be using apps. Uh, if we take a look at our uh, setup, it says the subpath should be express proxy. Let's gonna take that, paste that in. Uh, let's fetch our ngrok URL, paste it in, and then push in proxy underscore rock. Uh, this comes from over here. Uh, the proxy URL just kind of set up and ready to go. But in case you want to see where this works, you can head over to servo index.js, search for proxy underscore route and there you go in line 98 at least as of right now uh, this is where we are using the proxy route so uh, you can change this if you want to i recommend kind of keeping it the same because it doesn't really matter uh, so it's proxy route and then you have the verify proxy middleware now this generates a signature calculates it verifies that hey the actual data that is coming through is you know, from Shopify and it's completely valid. So this is, uh, you know, already set up and ready to go. And then it takes you to proxy router. This is available in Servo routes app proxy index, right? Uh, the first route that's set up for you is slash JSON. So to now see this in action on how this actually works, let's run the Servo and let's install the app. So copy that. Uh, I forgot to save this. Let's open up a new route. Shop. So I have most of the things up and ready to go already, just so that it's uh, you know not too much work in getting everything done. Uh, the repository is now running through authentication, going through every single thing. I already have it up and running, so again, uh, this is just to save time and I hate jump cuts. So, you know, now this is up and running. We don't have to worry about this. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to open up the online store. Whoops, over here, right? And then head over to slash express, oops, apps slash express proxy slash JSON. And the moment we get here, it shows us the content that we actually want to take a look at, which is content proxy be working. Now we can add in, uh, now just to like ensure that, hey, if this is actually the thing working, uh, let's kind of change the content to, this is for my YouTube tutorial. Save this, the, uh, the server restarts, refresh, and this is for my YouTube tutorial. Now, what happens if we kill the server, right? And if we refresh this now, it's gonna break. It's gonna throw you a 404 and it's gonna tell you, hey, that there was an error in the third party application, right? So your app needs to be always up and running for the proxy to kind of actually work. Now, if you want to see if uh, uh, the proxy is properly registered, what we do is we head over to apps, we go to apps and sales channel settings, and we click on the app. And then here it's gonna show you what the app proxy URL is. Let's remember this because this is gonna be very handy very soon, all right? Now, another problem is, uh, this is something that I personally hate a lot of how merchants can customize this URL. 
So if I were to change this into uh, say new route, right? And now if I head over here, it's gonna break. It's gonna be like, hey, we didn't find anything over here. But let's kind of change this, which is new route. And now it works perfectly fine. Uh, this is perfectly fine if you are the developer and if you are the one doing it. But a lot of times uh, the motion can just change it by mistake and break your entire app because your theme app extension is going to be calling a very specific route. Uh, another way your app proxy could break is if you have two apps installed with the exact same proxy route, uh, it's going to append like hyphen two right next to it. Uh, and that's just gonna break your app again. So you really want to make sure that in your app setup, the sub path is very unique, right? It's possibly, so let's say if I'm making a, like a YouTube tutorial app, so I would call it say Hura YT tutorial uh, proxy rod. So you kind of want to keep it as unique as possible just so that no one else kind of comes up with it. Or there's a high chance your proxy routes are gonna break. So uh, one of the baseline questions here is, uh, now this is a question that I get a lot is, hey, how do you make uh, GraphQL calls in your proxy route? Uh, so this is my proxy route. And of course, if you head over to routes, uh, I have a GQLE call that's already up and running. So we're just gonna copy this. And in a JSON, let's kind of paste this in. Let's import Shopify from Shopify API, whoops. And let's make this a sync. Right, so now this is good to go. Let's clear up this. And this is where we're gonna now break the app. Uh, where this is like, okay, apps, express proxy slash JSON. And now this is gonna throw an error where it's like, hey, I can't read the shop because, well, it can't find the right session. Now this usually happens because, well, it just doesn't want to work. I never actually sat down and figured out, be like, hey, what's actually breaking? But if you want to make a GraphQL request from your proxy route, all you have to do is remove the load current session and make it to load offline session. Now this takes, uh, a my Shopify URL. So right now let's hard code this just to confirm that if it's working properly or not. That's my Shopify.com. And let's refresh. And now you have it. And that's now this call is actually just getting the shop name. And that's what we're getting over here. It's here at the here as test store. Now, uh, how do we get the shop, uh, you know, by default, because you cannot really uh, hard code your shop name. So let's kind of console log the headers over here. So that's going to be request.headers. So this we can actually see what headers are being passed and we can extract the shop uh, from there itself. Let's refresh. And now you have this like huge list of headers. What we are actually concerned with is the X shop domain. So let's copy that. And first, I still want to uh, first console log it just so that we know we're getting it right. Let's refresh this again, and I'm getting my current shop. So what we're gonna do here now is, let's hide that, let's kill that, current shop equals this, and shop. All right, uh, shop is already defined twice. Let's call it my shop. Right, uh, now it should be error free, that's good. And now if we refresh, it's working as expected. Let's just add in the ID too, just so we can actually see it working. Yep, it's now sending me the ID and the name. So uh, I have no idea why Shopify would be like, hey, don't make GraphQL requests from here, but at least now we know how to make GraphQL requests. Now, a lot of times people ask me like, hey, can you actually solve HTML pages off of here? Let's test that out. So let's make this, let's actually stop the server for a second so it doesn't complain. HTML equals this. Oh, this is gonna take a second to type in. Uh, let's add in body. Stop 
that and let's just say absolute b tag this is coming from a proxy and we can send this as html restart the server and it actually works i've tried uh, to kind of push out Next.js applications or React applications from the app proxy and have failed. Uh, and plus, I, I don't see why you would actually want to serve an entire HTML page from your app proxy. But if you have a use case, I would really love to know about it. Now, uh, I personally want to share this because this is something we did recently. The merchant was like, hey, can you please not take my name? And I'm like, all right, that's understandable. Uh, but but it's really fun of like, how did how we managed to kind of uh, figure out like, okay, hey, this is something that can be done. So uh, back over here, uh, where is my store? All right, let's go back to admin. Okay, so remember how we saw that, hey, you can actually change the uh, app proxy URL. So now what happened was this merchant was using Shopify downloads and Shopify download users slash a slash downloads and then it generates a specific link for that specific download. Now this merchant doesn't offer digital downloads anymore, which means that if you head over to that URL, it's expired. You can't access your downloads again. Uh, they sent out an email back in January, so it's like it's been almost a year, that hey, we are shutting it down, you have a month, please download everything else, and uh, yeah, we are kind of done offering digital downloads. So I think most of the people did, but now as the holiday season is coming around, people are like, hey, we can't find it. So they were already using like a redirect app, and uh, what they figured out that they have to add in every single URL over and over again for it to work. But then uh, eventually we ended up in a place where they called me up. They're like, hey, we need to figure out a solution for this, right? So what they did was they set up a new page um, from, uh, sorry, in their store from the theme customizer that states that, hey, sorry, we don't uh, offer downloads anymore. And that's understandable, right? Like, hey, we sent out an email back in January, you had a month. Uh, and we are not a hosting service, right? We haven't uh, we haven't offered the ability to buy digital downloads for over a year. So I don't see uh, why the store should be held responsible because they gave everyone enough time. Uh, and we didn't want to send an email out either, right? Because it's like, hey, by the way, that product that you bought two years ago, you don't have access to it anymore. Uh, because it's really infuriating, and especially with the holiday season coming in, you you can't really like take that risk like hey black friday is a week uh, away and uh let me just really irritate you with this so we had to come up with a new solution and this is how we figured it out now think about this uh we cannot like change this right because there's no possible way to get into this uh mostly because uh, this is a protected route so what you can instead do is if you head back to app setup the proxy url doesn't have to be your app uh, URL. This could be, you know, Shopify.dev for all you know. And this will still work. So let's save this. Let's wait for a second. All right. And now let me just open up a new tab. Apps proxy. And if you see the URL, it's at my app proxy, but this is actually Shopify.dev. So you can actually really mess around with this if you have to. So the way we kind of handled this was let's kill the server just so that we are very clear that hey, nothing's running in the background, All right? All right, so terminal, desktop. So now what we did was we created an HTML redirect. So now this had index in 404. And let's kind of add this in basic HTML tags, body, script, window.location equals. So this was the landing page which they had set up, which stated that, hey, sorry, we don't offer this anymore. But for now, let's kind of set it up to Shopify.dev. Uh, yeah, let's actually set it up to Shopify.dev. Which means that the moment you visit the base, uh, which is slash app slash uh, X plus proxy, 
you're hit with this index and then the JavaScript runs and it takes you to Shopify.dev. But what about the unique URLs? Because every single unique URL is gonna require that specific page, right? And that means you have to create a bajillion pages, which is where the 404 page comes in handy, right? Because that page doesn't exist. It's gonna take you to the 404. And we do the same thing over here, where we are like, hey, uh, you know, if it's the base, or if it's any of the URLs, so essentially we're capturing the entire spectrum. Let's take you to the 404 page, which is gonna run the JavaScript, redirect you back into Shopify.dev. So we have this up and running. I've saved it in the folder already. Um, and then I created a new uh, Netlify deployment. Let's drop in this folder over here. Now this is gonna deploy, right? And so I kind of want to show you how we dealt with this because uh, a lot of times we know that, hey, these things exist, but we don't actually know how to use this. So this is my Netlify apps URL. Let's just paste this. And it's taking us to Shopify.dev, right? So this is exactly what we want. Now, if I come over here and paste this over here, which is, uh, you know, uh, serving that index in 404 page, and I'm good to go. So now let's see, oh, yeah, I can just copy this. So if I head over to Express Proxy, it's gonna take me to Shopify.dev because that index.html file is changing the location. But if I add in well, any other URL, it's gonna throw a 404 and then it's gonna take me again to Shopify.dev, uh, which is the way you intended it to work, right? So that now every single time someone comes in with a unique download link, Instead of being, uh, you know, thrown a 404 page, they are now thrown a 404 page that we created that redirects them back into uh, the landing page which states that, uh, hey, sorry, we don't offer downloads anymore. So this way we kind of mitigated the risk of, uh, you know, really angering a lot of customers because all of a sudden, you know, when, when you are told like, hey, you can't have it, you just want it, right? Uh, so yeah, uh, this is app proxies in general. Uh, I hope you uh, had fun understanding a lot of these concepts. Uh, if you wanted to go over any specific concept, I would love to know that in the comments. Uh, by the way, all the links are in the description so you don't have to worry about everything. Uh, and yeah, uh, of course, you can always follow me on Twitter. Uh, this is the one place where I'm super active. You know, uh, come hang around, uh, DM me. I'm always available for that. So yeah, uh, thanks so much uh, for watching this video. I'm doing an entire series on every single aspect of how to build a Shopify uh, application. And later on, we'll also be switching over some other long form content, which is not really engineering, but more about entrepreneurship on how to build an app or maybe how to ideate or uh, how to start an agency because I, I run an agency. Uh, and I feel like I have a lot of value to add in that sense. Uh, so yeah, uh, I mean, I hope you like the video. Uh, like, subscribe, all of that stuff YouTubers keep telling you uh, to do. Uh, you know the drill. Uh, and yeah, it's Hoshdeep saying uh, thanks so much for watching the video. Uh, uh, take care.